Hi, everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we're going to talk about Moonrakers, and this is published by IV Studios. Is that IV like intra intravenously? Or like Ivy League schools? Or like IV, like the normal Roman numeral for four? Or like Poison IV? Yep, that's it. You got it. Ivy, like, I'm, I'm Poison I, Ivy Studios. I can come up with more, I'm sure. I'm sure you could. <laughs> I am sure you could. All right, so Moonrakers, this is a deck building, kind of an engine building game. You're trying to get to 10 points. It's a race to 10 points, but you're going to be doing these contracts. They're going to get more and more challenging. You're going to need some help from some friends. Friends, some um, frenemies. They are. Yeah, they're not exactly yeah. friends because they're your opponents. Opponents. So frenemies. Yeah. You're going to need some help from them. All right, you guys. This is the game. It's awesome. The table. Let me show you. All right. Here is our setup for Moonrakers. In the middle here, this is our point track. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get to 10 points. So how do we get our points? Well, the main way is going to be through these contracts over here. You're going to have a kind of a selection of eight of them to choose from at any given time. They start off easy, but then right away they're going to get harder and harder. So all these different things that you see over here on the side of the boards here, those are going to be what the requirements are. So for this one, for instance, it's going to take one of those damage and one thruster in order to complete that particular contract. But how do you get those? So you're basically going to, this is a deck builder, right? So you're going to start with a small deck of cards, and it's going to include some of those things. It's going to include some reactors, which is how you get your actions. It's going to include thrusters, which is how you get your cards. It's going to include shields, which is how you kind of avoid damage. And it's also going to include uh, damage cards itself. Uh, and then there's also going to be misses, which misses are bad. They basically just take up a spot in your hand. All those are along the top there. Like I said, you have a starting hand of 10 cards, but you're going to be able to modify that and add to that as well. So over here on this side, we have our different ship parts, which are these square cards, as well as we have crew members. These are over here. There are three of them showing currently, but you have a deck there as well. Uh, you're going to be able to draft these crew members into your pool, so that way you have stronger and stronger cards. Now, these ship parts over here, there's a whole bunch of them listed, but what they're going to do is they're going to go on your personal player board. So basically, we have four spots for them, and you're going to be able to customize this board by adding ship parts to them. And they do all different things. They could give you some discounts. They might give you some extra cards to draw, extra actions to use. Uh, these can be really, really strong. But on top of that, one of the things they do is give you the cards that you're going to be able to buy. So, for instance, if you were to buy this card here, the ship part here, this is the Vector Jets E3. In the top right, it says one thruster, that yellow card there. This is how you're going to add more cards to your deck as well. By buying those ship parts, it's going to give you more of those cards that you can put into your deck. So, on your turn, what you're going to do is you are going to... Basically, you're going to select one of these things. So, let's say, based off the difficulty level, we are able to... We think we're able to do this one right here, this escort duty. It's going to take three thrusters and one crew member to do it. There's also a hazard level of one. If we succeed, we're going to get one point. We're going to get two of our credits, which is going to be used to buy more cards. And one mystery card here, which is kind of cool. But you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, we only start with two thrusters in our deck, and this takes three thrusters in order to play. I think I'm going to need to call in some reinforcements. So what you can do is you can open it up to every other player, and you can say, hey, you know what, uh, Bethany, if you join with me, you know what, I will give you two of the credits, um, but I will take the point and the card, uh, and you have to roll the hazard dice. Like, whoa, 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 if I'm helping you out, you're rolling the hazard dice, I get the card, I get one dollar, you can have a point and a card, or up the point and, and the, the dollar. So you gotta go back and forth, you negotiate until you agree on a price, or you don't. If you're able to agree on a price, then you start playing cards. If you're able to satisfy the requirements of having three thrusters being part of what was played, plus one crew member, you succeed, you're going to get those rewards divided up amongst you. Now, you can attempt it by yourself, but the harder and harder these cards get, the harder and harder it is to do without the help of some of your players around the table. Now, the hazard dice, what those basically are, is those are going to be these dice over here in the corner. There is zeros, ones, and two hazards on there. When you roll those, that's basically saying you need to have this many shields played by the end of this combat or the end of this turn or else you're going to lose that many points. So that could be a real problem. Let's say you know, you're know you up at the two-point range. You're playing a one-point card, but you are having to just play two shields. If you're unable to do that, well, you're going to get one point for completing the card, but you're going to lose two points for not being able to play enough shields. 
Now, there are lots and lots of these crew member cards that can help out with that, but those crew members can do lots of things. They can give you more actions, they can give you more cards, they can help you avoid hazard dice. So, those crew members can be really, really important, but you really want to take as few of these hits from these dice as possible, or you want to have a lot of shields to be able to withstand those hits. So those contracts are going to be the main way you're going to get your points. However, you also have objectives. You're going to start the game with two objectives, and they can say any number of things. This one says, uh, acquire three of those blue parts for your ship. So if, you know, you acquire three blue parts, you get a point. This one says, well, three orange. Let's get something different here. Play at least five damage cards, five of the orange cards, on the same contract. That's huge. If you're able to do that, you're able to get a point. If there's ever a point where you're really kind of short, running short on cash, or you just don't like the cards that are out here, they don't work with what the hand that you have is, you can instead choose to discard your hand, not play it. You take one of the credits from the bank, and what you get to do is you get to draw two of these objective cards, discard one of them, and hang on to the other one. And then you could also, let's say, get rid of a card that you don't like, and replace it from the deck. When you do that, instead of doing one of the contracts, that's called staying at base. But either way, whether you stay at base or whether you try to fulfill a contract, you can still do a purchase at the end of the game, or at the end of the turn. You try to either buy one of those crew members or one of those ship parts. Once you've done that or passed, the next player is going to take their turn. It's really just a race of that 10 points, but you need to build your deck up along the way in order to do that successfully. Um, I really liked, like, a lot the graphic design and the artwork choices, but just so much, like, all of it. I loved the aesthetic of it. Like the little shimmering gold. Go like that. Yeah. Yeah. You see the little shimmering gold and all that stuff. Oh my gosh. It looks so cool. And how it kind of blends into the background. I just, I really, really enjoyed that. And here's the great thing. None of that matters if you can't read what's on a card, but you still can can read what's on the cards so you still know what's happening and so I just really liked how that all blended together and it 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 helped me be invested and present during the game because I enjoyed the artwork I enjoyed the graphic design and I could still read everything that I needed to read I agree. The graphic design was awesome. It was consistent throughout. It was all over through the rule book, on the cards, on the background of the player boards. Even the box itself has those kind of those touches yeah. all throughout it, which I loved. Um, and now, our version of the game had these awesome metal coins, had these cool little plastic minis for the ships, your, your point trackers. The game, the, the cards themselves had a really nice vinyl finish to them, and the boards were thick. Now, this is like the Kickstarter edition, so I'm not sure if any of that's like going to be in every edition. But I will say that the version that we have, the components were out of this world. Even the insert itself was so easy to use. It, everything was organized really, really well. Set up as a breeze. Just take everything out, file it back in. It, it holds excellently. Not enough good inserts get enough praise. Yeah, this for is somebody one. who like stresses out about pickup, like Ryan singing praises of it, like means a lot. It like means a lot. I never pick up games because I'm always like, I'm gonna mess it up somehow. No, it's fine. I just, when she goes to sleep, I, I fix them. <laughs> See? <laughs> I don't tell him the games that the girls and I play, because I know that it would just stress him out and that he needs and to And then I look find out them. later when I play it, and there's like missing tiles and stuff. I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, speaking of tiles, this has nothing to do with tiles, but I really thought... <laughs> okay, so this game has like, what, five different types of cards? Or the yeah. four types and then the, like the bad card, because all these... Yeah, all the deck builders have that. Um... That's it. Like, usually when you play with a deck builder, there's just, like, so many cards to buy. So many different things. And they all interact with each other in different ways. And this didn't do that. But it still felt like that. Like, there was still something to go for. Having all of that, and then you just add one or two different people or crew members in that. I was impressed. I, like, was blown away by how you could only have so many different things. Like, you didn't always have new stuff coming up. But it worked. It worked for what it was going for. You could still go different directions with it. I was just like, it was really cool. <laughs> yeah, the negotiation in this game was extremely interesting. You know, you can't get to those bigger level cards, those point cards by yourself, especially early on. You really need some help. But, you know, it's like, do, what do what are you willing to offer up? You know, everyone's going to kind of like get the most out of it. They're going to try to, it's almost like an I split you choose mechanism in, in a way. Yeah. Yeah, so bringing the negotiation into a deck builder like this I thought was really interesting. Deck builders, you know, when they first came out, 
the pure deck builders I really, really, really liked. You know, I didn't have a problem with them. Dominion, one of my favorite games of all time. I'll play Ascension, I'll play, you know, the DC deck builder or any of the Cryptozoic games like that that are just, you know, just cards anytime, and I'll absolutely have a blast doing it. But it seems like the market has gotten away from that. They want people, the market, you know, wants deck building plus something else, you know. <laughs> so you need a board, or you need some yeah. movement, you need, so Clank, you know, I really like Clank too, but, you know, you need that board and moving around. So this, adding in the negotiation, it filled that hole, uh, filled that, you know, that desire people have for having deck building with something else, in a way that you still get that deck building feeling, yeah. and you still get the negotiation feeling, you know, that's not coming from a... Um, like a diplomacy style game, you know, a really heavy, crunchy negotiating game, or something silly like a party game. It was nice having, you know, this kind of midweight euro y de engine building, deck building game with those negotiation mechanisms in there. I thought that was really pretty cool. Um, I will say that for a two player game, you know, you lose a little bit of that. You know, it's much more about like the, the pure math of it, just dividing it up, cutting it in half. All right, I'll take two of those, you take two of those, I'll take one, I'll take one. And then you do you agree, yes or no, and then. It, you know, it wasn't quite as intriguing, you know, when you're playing with the four or five player counts. You know, it adds more time because you're negotiating a little bit yeah. back and forth. But, but even with the two player, it, it's still, you don't know what anybody's secret objective is. That's like, true. Like, you could just be doing stuff because you're trying to get that extra point. And so, I mean, there's still stuff to be had there even with the two player because you don't know what's going on behind. And you can negotiate a lot more in the early game than you do in the late game. So I still feel like there's a lot of, like... Variety, not variety, but I feel like there's still a lot of negotiation that you can do, even yeah. with just you and I. Yeah, even the point is, I thought that was a really cool way to add something else into a deck builder besides just cards. Even though I had no problem with that either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would it be that clear? Because I'm not like that guy. Yeah, we like lots of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> just in general. <laughs> um, so, overall, I liked this one. A lot more than I thought I was going to. I remember when Ryan was first teaching this to me, and I just was thinking, like, but why? <laughs> like, I just didn't under... Okay, I can do this stuff with my ship, and I get all of the same cards that are already there. Like, I can't, like, upgrade. You know how you try to get a synergy with your hand? Okay, and then I have to do... But why? And then I played it the second time. Not the first time. The second time, and I was like, I get the why now. You can do so much with this. Like, you can build up lots of synergies with putting things on your ship to watch the direction you're going with your cards and try to get people that all work with that. And it's just, there's not a lot, but there's so much that you can do with that. And I was just really impressed with that. And I had so much fun trying to build up synergies with the different things that I do with my ships and then trying to get people that also bounce off of that so maybe you wouldn't even have to get certain types of cards because you already have all, like, the things that you need between the players. <gasps> it was great. Yeah, I mean, this game is strong. I really enjoy it. I mean, there's things like all throughout the graphic design of the cards and the, you know, it had to do with drawing cards. It was usually had some elements of yellow in the cards. It had to do yeah. with more actions. It usually had to have some blue in the cards. If there was shields, there was green. And it keeps on going yeah. on and on. I thought that was really interesting. And it was throughout the, you know, the ship parts. That was throughout the contracts, the actions themselves, the crew members that you could draft. All those things had the same elements flowing throughout them. Really made it easier to teach as well. Um, which this game, you know, I was, you know, I don't know, intimidated a little bit by the size of the box. And the, the playtime yeah. was like 60 to 120 minutes. Like, I, I, that sounds like a big old crunchy euro. Yeah. Um, and when you're learning a game that's 120 minutes on the box and you start it at like 9 p.m., you're just like, this is not going to go well. <laughs> He's already put you in a weird mindset. But honestly, this was, you know, very accessible. Uh, a really fun deck builder. Um, this is one that we are going to keep in for a long time, and uh, I can break this out, you know, all the time. I like this one a lot. Well, everybody, thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to us so you can see our videos as they come out. And you can follow us in all the places. On Facebook, we're Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. On Twitter, we're Ryan and Bethany 1. And on Instagram, we are Ryan and Bethany. All right, you guys, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.